This is my silent 60 that I created. It all started with a crazy idea and then a desire to make that crazy idea come true. So how crazy is this idea? This keyboard is a mishmash of things that are supposed to help make a keyboard quieter. I know that doesn't sound too crazy an idea, but I wanted to see how far I was willing to take that. The answer to that question, unsurprisingly, will come after I give a quick tour of the keyboard. The case is a 60% aluminum case with a stainless steel insert. It's a case that's very quickly becoming a favorite for many in the community. The plate is a standard aluminum plate that's been anodized red and supports switch top removal. The switches are lubed MX silent reds with Zelensios. The keycaps currently on are a Dvorak PBT set that's cherry profile, which I think is pretty awesome. I'm honestly not sure who the manufacturer for these keycaps are because they feel a bit different and the homing bars are also very small. I'm thinking maybe this could be a very early IMSTO batch since it has similarities to the IMSTO hangle set I used to own. Finally, last but not least, I did put a felt pad between the case and the PCB to help out with absorbing more sound. When I first built this keyboard, I had no expectations that it would be good in any way. I'm just reducing the travel distance with more and more mods as I go. In the original build, I was planning on using O-rings as well, but the ones I got ended up being too thick and taking too much space to allow me to actuate the switches. That was as far as I was willing to take it. That was my line in the sand. If you put O-rings on this keyboard, you'll barely be able to actuate switches to type, and you'll have no travel distance. It will feel completely mushy and horrible. Without O-rings though, it feels much less like mush, which is a bonus, although to me it still feels a bit on that mushy side. Although I do know a few people who might find this feeling comforting or impact reducing on their fingers. And to be honest, after everything, it's kind of a counterproductive keyboard since I've easily heard quieter keyboards than this and hell, I may even own some quieter keyboards than this. Let's find out. Close enough. But can this keyboard still be a decent typing experience? Well, not enough to justify the costs. All in the right places, the costs are right. Let's start with this aluminum case here. For me, it was like 70 to 80 bucks shipped with a stainless steel insert. I know in Mass Shop, it was $60 for the case with a stainless steel insert, which is really a great deal. Honestly, it's a great case. The tolerances are good. It has rubber feet on the bottom. The angle is decent. It weighs a good amount. If you have a Poker 3 and you're thinking, I already have you know, an included aluminum case for my keyboard, is this really an upgrade? The answer to that question is a definite yes. It is a definite upgrade and a great one for its price. I mean, look at those wonderful high profile sides. Look how clean the weight looks. A possibly minor complaint someone might have about this case is the rubber feet. They work fine, but at least on mine, they look really weird. When I had them on the sticky sheet, they were clear, but when I applied them to the keyboard, they turned into this weird booger color. That's my only complaint, and it's not something you really see when you're typing. Moving on. Cherry MX Silent Red switches. I heard some decent things about these switches before I got them, so I went in looking forward to this. In a scenario where they are judged on their own, not judged by this build as a whole, they're quite decent. I think for many people who want might a who might want a soft and quiet linear, it's probably going to be their best choice. In the context of this build, it's been lubed and Zelensios have been thrown on. With lube, the switch is even nicer since it's much smoother and feels less scratchy. I use TechKey's Thin Lube for this build. The Zelensios, on the other hand, honestly don't belong on switches like this. The Cherry MX Silent Reds achieves its silent effect by having small rubber bumpers on the slider where it would make contact with the switch housing as, you, as it moves up and down. To accommodate these small rubber bumpers, some travel distance had to be sacrificed. The amount sacrificed is quite small, but it's still noticeable. The fact that it is noticeable and the amount it is noticeable is worrying when you add zillias to the equation. Overall, I'm not disappointed with these linears like I have with other cherry linears in the past. And to be honest, I think I'd probably still choose mm, these over browns, but I'd choose cherry browns over cherry linear stock. I know, odd choices. But in my opinion, Zelios are the best way to silence the feel of an MX style switch while maintaining more of the original switch than O-rings. In my opinion, they work, whereas O-rings will literally turn your keyboard into a typing experience that rivals ty typing on poop. 
I do have Zelios on another keyboard, my Phantom TKL, and I think they work perfectly on those 62 gram Ergo Clears. Here with the MX on Reds, it's like two rights that made a wrong. The Zelios and MX on Reds shouldn't go together. Like Hot Cheetos, Mountain Dew, and O-Rings, those three things should all stay out of mechanical keyboards. The choice of PBT caps was because of their density and thickness. PBT is more dense than ABS, I'm pretty sure, and so I figured density should help absorb vibrations and sound better. These PBT caps, PBT keycaps, sorry, seem pretty run of the mill, and nothing particularly stands out to me. Their cherry profile, homing bars of scoops, the Vorak layout, and just the right amount of thick. As a minor note, but still important for this build, the stabilizers are cherry stabilizers that have been clipped and lubed for extra measure. So. What's the typing experience like with this keyboard? I'm going to tell you a quick story and hopefully it wasn't segue too long, but have you ever lived or visited anywhere particularly humid like Southeast Asia during the monsoon season? It would be sunny all day and then suddenly a giant rain, often seemingly coming from nowhere, rolls into town and will rain heavily for just one to three hours before stopping and resuming with the ever so bright sun for the rest of the day. I'm telling you this because throughout the day, even though when it's not raining in these areas, the weather, in the air especially, it feels muggy, it feels heavy and thick with moisture. I'm telling you this because the best way I describe typing on this keyboard is muggy. Not in my keyboard will occasionally spurt water on my fingers, but as I press, the contact and squeezing of the rubber pads, of the switch slider and the Zilancios, all that combined creates a down press that quickly hits a padded wall to only feel thick and weird as you hit that wall. The switch uh, has still a stock spring in it, which is only rated at 45 gram actuation, but with all the rubber feeling bits, it doesn't feel right on your fingers. It doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel light, but it doesn't feel right either. This keyboard is quieter than two teens messing around while the parents are in the next room. It's quieter than the comeback you whispered to yourself in the shower and you wish you had thought of it on the spot. The Silent 60 is quieter than Bektor on top clock, but the reach to become quieter, the compromises that were made are too heavy. It feels overburdened and that the keyboard parts have been slapped on opposed to selected for a purpose-built keyboard. In putting all these mods on this keyboard, Icarus flew and then came plummeting down. This would be the great example of just taking things too far. To improve this build, it would be as easy as doing one or two things, which are just reductions. Either I would take off Zelencios, or I would switch the sliders of the uh, switches to a different switch. This build was a fun and interesting lesson in taking things too far and making a crappy feeling keyboard. Individually, all the parts of this keyboard are good. One might read them out as switches, case, plate, PCB, and other parts. Metaphorically, you can see them as you know, pizza, hamburger, hot dogs, and other popular American delicacies. Putting them all together in this configuration is like making a salad with those ingredients. I mean, I know that is the epitome of being an American, you know, making the salad consisting of pizza, hamburgers, hot dogs, but it doesn't mean it'll turn out good. This keyboard, like that American salad, represents a lot of things. They both represent the right to try to achieve. They both represent a unification of different options toward the same goal. Both would be horrible to eat, though. And I'm sure some in the community may savor the taste of keycaps that we've seen in the past. I'm pretty sure both will end up turning out quite disappointing. And that's why I'm giving the Silent 60 a 24 out of 60 points. Better than typing on a Dell rubber dome I had as a child, but worse than my imaginations. And the TLDW, don't mix Silent Reds with Zelencios. Thanks for watching.